Our refrigeration cycle, as important as it is, is only one aspect of the system. We're absorbing heat from inside and we're rejecting heat to the outside, which is very important and we're going to cover lots more about this information soon. But I want you to also be thinking outside of the box. The house itself is part of the environment. So the AC system isn't just some magical tool that we put in. It needs to be also considered the whole house and the occupants inside of that house. People ask me, well, what do we sell? Do we sell air conditioners? And the answer is no, we really don't. What we do sell or what we should be selling as professional HVAC people is comfort. And the things that affect comfort are temperature, which is what we're doing here, humidity, which we're going to talk about soon, sound, we shouldn't be hearing this unit, air movement, you shouldn't feel the unit come on or off, but a fan helps you feel cooler. And also air cleanliness is a big part of that. How clean the air is. And that goes a lot beyond just putting some kind of device in the house that cleans the air. Air quality is a big part of what we do. So when we talk about housing and air conditioning, the whole house is a system. It's not just replacing these parts or just putting these boxes in. We need to look at the whole house as a system. We need to be selling to the customer comfort, comfort in the knowledge that the technician brings, as well as comfort for their overall side of the house. And people always tell me the same thing. Well, Ty, people only want something cheap here. And I argue that that is absolutely 100% not true. Everywhere I go, no matter what country, what city, what state that I go to, people say, Ty, you don't understand. Here, people only want stuff that's cheap. And I always respond to that with, let's talk about people's favorite foods. And hardly anybody, hardly anybody ever says McDonald's. That's your absolute cheapest place you could possibly eat that I know of, or ramen, which is the cheapest thing that I know of. Familiar with that, unfortunately. But that is the cheapest thing. But you see people that even they don't have much money, they appreciate quality food. They appreciate going out to a restaurant. And it's not just that you can get that food. They're wanting to pay more for food. It's the whole experience. You have the wait staff, the more comfortable chairs, the environment, the sounds, all of this goes into it. It's not that they go in and start arguing with the cook, being like, you know, Ruth Chris, this steak is too expensive. I'm going to burger down here at McDonald's for way cheaper. It's the idea that the quality and everything goes in that. So everywhere I go, people say that same thing. And then they argue that food's different. So I talk about automobiles. Well, is there only the cheapest automobile out there? And I'm not going to use any words because somebody always gets offended. But they say, no, people have this car and people have that car. And there's this dealership and there's that dealership. Even in the, some of those poorest communities, somebody will have a nicer vehicle. So people spend money on what they can afford. The problem is nobody wants to go out and spend money. Nobody says, hmm, I want to spend the most money I can on anything. When you go out and buy TVs, for example, people look at a TV and they put all the TVs in the wall and sometimes there's really no difference but other than how they set them, but you have low-end TVs and high-end TVs and people will buy a new TV every two years. Every two years they're buying a new TV on average. Then they take that TV, put it in the bedroom, the bedroom TV, the kid's room, the kid's room, they give it away or whatever. So people are spending money on a TV which provides very little for comfort at all. Now think about the home. People spend most of the money on their home whether they're renting a home or they're purchasing a home it's their biggest investment and it's the thing they keep ultimately the longest we get a car sell it get a newer car a newer car but a home is a huge long-term investment so if you think of the ac system instead of just being this box that makes cold air it's actually a comfort device and we need to think about the whole house how well sealed the house is the insulation where the heat's coming in at how fast are we moving the heat back out the occupants, the temperature, the humidity, the air cleanliness, all of these are going to play a big part in it. How we're moving the air, the air quality, it's a whole house system. So once you start explaining to the customer that you're a thermodynamics expert and you're looking at this whole entire house and not just these parts, let's look at what makes them comfortable. A lot of people, they think that every time the air comes on, they're supposed to turn the TV up. They think that's the way it's supposed to be and it's not. They think that they're supposed to have high electric bills. They think that they should hear that system come on and off all the time. They think that the air is supposed to be blowing on them because they've never had a system actually working correctly. When I get done installing a system for a customer, sometimes I get, com I get complaints. Hey Ty, I don't hear this thing coming on or off. That's quality. That's customer service. That is true comfort. You should never know if this air conditioner is running or it's not running. So I want to get you to that level. So when you're going out, you know how to repair, you repair parts, you know how to fix things, but you also know how to make the whole house as a system. So there's always going to be people that want things cheap and their minds. You have to change them over to understanding the bigger picture. 
For example, I had a customer and she called me out for a price. I gave her the price of the high-end system. She goes, oh my gosh, that's way too much. So I gave her the price of a mid-level system. She goes, oh my gosh, that's way too much. So I gave her the price of a baseline system. This is the cheapest that I would go. And she goes, oh gosh, that is still way too much. Don't you have anything cheaper? And I asked, well, is price your only concern? And she goes, well, absolutely. I said, oh, I apologize. Let me refigure those numbers. So I refigured some numbers, and this was many, many years ago, but I gave her a price. It was like $1,500. And she goes, oh my gosh, yes, that's exactly what I want. What are we talking about? And I said, okay, well, in this room, we're going to put an 8,000 BTU window unit. In this room, we're going to put a 5,000 BTU window unit. And she got so mad, and she kicked me out of her house. Well, at that point, I really didn't care because I wasn't going to get the job anyways. I never want to be known as the cheapest. I want to be known as the best, or at least the top end, at least. So I was surprised that a few weeks later she called me back and she actually went with the mid system. She got to thinking that no, cost wasn't her only concern. Because in HVAC, if cost is your only concern, you cannot get cheaper than a window unit. So when a customer says that they need something cheap or they have to have air, they have an option. They can put in a window unit. Now if they want this whole comfort system to work correctly, that's you and your knowledge and how you're going to work in this system and how you can make this system a part of their home system that provides comfort. It's very important to think about that bigger picture because somebody's always going to come and say, hey, can't you do this for cheaper? I don't go over to the Maserati shop and be like, you know what? The Kia over here, I can get for a whole lot less. And it also has four wheels that gets me from point A to point B. They would laugh at me and kick me out. Yet in the trades, a lot of times people think, well, the customer keeps wanting something cheaper. So let me just keep putting cheaper stuff in. That's what we call a race to the bottom. And if you keep trying to do something cheaper, then somebody else will come in under you and do it cheaper. And then somebody else comes under them and does it cheaper, and we never do win. I never want to be known as the cheapest. Thinking anything that you do, being known as the cheapest, usually isn't a win. To do it cheaper, you have to do it so much more volume, and that's a whole lot more work. Be the best. Let's think about this another way. Who was more proud of the work? A chef that works at Ruth Chris Steakhouse or a chef that works at McDonald's? If you think, Ruth Chris Steakhouse, yes, I'm a chef, I'm a professional, blah, 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 these certifications, and you have the chef that works at McDonald's as they're following a buzzer. Nothing wrong with starting out at McDonald's. Nothing wrong with somebody getting their first job there or even working there and they're happy with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. So don't, don't get sidetracked, don't send me hate emails. I'm saying who is more proud, generally speaking? The people that put more pride in their work. Now, they may have to start here and work their way up. In HVAC, you're gonna to have to start someplace and you're gonna to have to start working your way up. But ideally, you want to be looked at as the professional. I want to be driving the service van that hit the button and all the keys lock or the little put the button in the window open. I want to have the nice tools. I want to be known as the professional. I don't want to be known as the cheapest guy. Now, I'm not talking that there isn't going to be some scenario and some other situations, but you should be striving to get to that point. And we're always striving to be better. Never just get satisfied and level off. Always continue to learn more. So what I'm giving you now is the base information and I'm giving it to you at no cost because I want to help people. And if you take this course seriously and you apply this information and strive to be the best, your future is unlimited. Now there's nothing wrong at wanting to find a point and be level. There would be some people that say, hey, all I want to do is just do maintenance. That's fine. Some people love to do install. That's fine. Some people want to do service. That's fine. Some people want to continuously grow nonstop. They start at the bottom, uh, whatever that is to you, and they work their way all the way to the top. I had one guy that actually took a job at an AC company being the janitor for him, and he worked up all his way through. Now he's a lead service tech for him. The future is limited. You have to decide what you want. Are you going to keep learning? Are you going to keep pushing? Are you keep learning more? Some people get to the position they want and they level off. And that's their choice. That's fine. But there's so much more to learn. There's always more to learn. And what do you want to be? Ideally, you want to be a thermodynamic expert. You want to think about the whole house system. You want to get into, for example, H, which we'll talk about later. You want to understand not just the heat transfer, but all the different types of equipment. And this is the path I want to lead you on. So understanding conduction, convection, radiation, all the components of the refrigeration cycle is that foundation to get you there.